people. I'm here today, you know, with a great brother who comes from uh, from Germany, and I would say is you know is my brother-in-law. When it, when we go into you know deeper uh, ways of how we can call ourselves, my brother uh, Tom. Uh, uh, brother Tom, before we go any further, mm -hmm. uh, actually, let's start like this because we don't want you know people to kind of like get mixed up. Uh, could you please, you know, share just a little bit, you know, about who you are and, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, what's happening? What's happening? Let our people know, bro. Hey, greetings. Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Thomas Kartongele Strauch, or also known as uh, Dogu of uh, Production Duo Ancient Astronauts. I'm here in Cologne, Germany, and um, I run uh, my record label, Switch Stance Recordings, for 20 years now, or actually we're in the 21st year now. And uh, yeah, I produce hip hop and reggae with my partner Kabaniak under the name Ancient Astronauts. And yeah, I'm a <clears throat> I'm an old hip hop kid. You know, hip hop is the music that I listened to for for the longest time in my life. I started listening to uh, to hip hop in the late in the late eighties. I did break dancing when uh, in 1984, and um, yeah, never left my life hip hop state. You know, it's. Uh, like you say, it's a, it's a re, it's a culture that we that people like us still believe in and see that it's spread all over the planet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to, I mean, talking about the nineties. Um, could you please just a little bit, you know, in how has your experience been? I mean, in terms of of uh, you know help up uh, in German, you know, in mm -hmm. those years, you know, in the nineties and you know, coming up this way, you know, what is the experience? What can you really tap in, you know, in yourself uh, as far as, you know, uh, uh, help up in German is concerned in the nineties? Um, yeah, I would even go back a little further to the late eighties, um, uh -huh. uh, like in 88, 89, these were the years when hip hop really started coming to Germany with bands like Public Enemy, Run DMC, uh, BDP or KS1 uh, and all these like more old school heads but then also getting more political like with Public Enemy. Uh, this, this is how I came to, um, to, to hip hop when I first heard Public Enemy because uh, it was the combination of like really a new sound like fat beats and like and grooves together with a real political message with a message that we all could uh, get something from no matter where you are on this planet and um, it's uh, it really it's yeah like I said I did break dancing in 1984 so this was also like hip-hop but it didn't stick with me it was just the dancing part that stick with me mm -hmm. but I, I I wasn't a graffiti head I tried graffitis yeah. with my friends when I was younger but that didn't work out. I very fast noticed that I don't have like a, <laughs> uh, the artistry in my hand. <laughs> you know? yeah. So I concentrated more on the dancing and then, but then the music really hit me. And then I, because of hip hop, I started DJing uh, with my friends, like the early stuff. And um, it really, uh, I think why hip hop in the late eighties and then in the nineties came all over Germany and we, uh, and, and the youth in, uh, in our country could connect with it was first off, it was a fight against racism. And mm -hmm. we also know racism here in our country. Yeah. Like I'm half, half Serbian, my mother's from Serbia, from Serbia, from Novi Sad. So I know what, what it means to get some racist shit from, from people in, um, in school, you know, because your mother is a foreigner. And uh, we have a lot of mixed uh, generate uh, mixed cultures here in, in Germany, and um, we have a lot of we have millions of Turkish people here. We have a lot of Greek people, a lot of people from the Balkans. We lo uh, we have African people. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I think our the youth uh, that I was part of, we were sick and tired of all this racism stuff, like of all the the skinhead thing in Germany. And we were happy that there was a music uh, that we, that first off we really liked, like how it sounded. It's just, just came over us and yeah. started making, making us dance, you know? Yeah. And then it also had like a meaning that we thought is the right 
a right thing to go out with um, into the world and say like, no, we don't want any more racism. We love all right. the culture, yeah. and not uh, and not start all this hatred. Like when we saw in the in the uh, in the late eighties, you know, all this political hatred and like the Cold War, um, the the the, uh, the Cold War uh, between Russia and then the NATO and the rest of the world. All this we 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 grew up with this, and we we said like no, it's now it's our time. We don't want this anymore. I think it was it's similar like like the um, Fridays for Future um, right. youth these days. They go out for the climate. We went went out with hip hop for uh, to fight racism, and and then of course um, what I loved about it is when you see like where where does breakdance come from? It comes from the Bronx or from like the projects in the US. Mm -hmm. And why was it invented? It was invented not just to be a cool, cool dance like it is nowadays. Like everywhere you see people breaking in videos, and yeah, it's so cool. But where it comes from, it was invented to stop uh, the people from killing each other on the streets. It was something that like different gangs should not hit each other, stab each other, shoot yeah. each other, but yeah. to fight in a, in a in a fair contest to fight uh, to 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 dance. Yeah. against each other and then see who's the best dancer. Word, word. I mean, talking about that, uh, I remember in 2019, you know, I happened to be, you know, uh, during one of the tours that I was on, I went to, uh, I was in German actually in July, uh, mm -hmm. you no, know, June, July, you know, if I'm not mistaken around that, that period. And then, you know, I happened to, you know, uh, do something without, you know, a couple of brothers at Young Berlin. I don't know if you know that, you know, that place. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Berlin, I, love, you know, I love it. I, yo, I love that sport, bro, you know what I mean? And, and you know, brother mentioned, you know, Val, a producer, uh, Mr. Wiz. So mm -hmm. when he, you know, kind of like told me about, she had a little bit, you know, the story, you know, about him while he was kind of, because we was having a conversation of how, you know, help up you know, how hip hop is being experienced on the different continents. And then tapping on that history, it was, it has been so interesting that just of recent, you know, uh, uh, my sister, Queen Sina invites me, it's like, yo, come over, you know, check out this, uh, you know, check out this movie, you know what I mean? And then oh, I'm like, yo, yeah, I must know this guy, you know what I mean? They mentioned, you know, uh, him to me and then, I was like, okay, it's it's kind of like interesting tapping into such stories and seeing how uh, hip hop actually, you know, taps into us uh, that humanity aspect of life that wherever you are, there is a journey. Uh, there is a journey that uh, that you know you have to walk in life. So wherever you are, mm -hmm. so while we talk about racism, while we talk about uh, discriminations, while we talk about all these different challenges or aspects of life that we come, you know, along that come along uh, the journey that we walk uh, is, you know, it's kind of interesting that the background of the way so many of us have connected through help up is being through the daily struggles, is being, you know, that meeting point whereby, you know, uh, what am I projecting next? You know, but before we go, I would love to share this quote from uh, a great a journalist called. Uh, Emma Warren, who says, you don't have to be a fan of German rap to love this film. It's a story about friendship, the joy, and the damage of success and what follows, and the universal ways in which hip hop brought friends together worldwide. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You know, how as I was just, just starting this movie, we almost lost, uh, Butchum was like, Stories like this, if we move into all these spaces we go to, educational systems, I mean, everywhere, and share such movies for our youth of today to kind of see the journey we, you know, people have had to walk, you know what I mean, to be in spaces where they are, to influence, to, to go about the change that is needed. We as the youth, uh, it's so many happening in this world. But if we tap into such experiences of people who have walked the journey, so and and also seeing this from 
you know, different parts of the world, you know what I mean? Like me, my first time getting into uh, help up in German, you know, was when, uh, way back when we were still in the University of Nation days. And then I happened to be there in 2019. And then actually seeing that is, I was like, yo, actually we're talking about a culture where wherever I go, you know, it's beyond, it's, it's actually beyond what people think. It's, it's been in a, in a space of freedom and a space of, of feeling self that, you know, mm -hmm. I can easily connect with a, a brother or a sister whereby, you know, I feel like it's a home wherever I got that deeper connection and that realization of, you know, my identity is, is who am I connected to? How do I reclaim who I am? You know, with that mm -hmm. idea that they're creating a barrier, you know, hence all these, you know, fighting of these, you know, uh, racism and other isms that, you know, uh, influence the way we live life in a negative way. So, you know, I truly appreciate, you know, the way uh, you bring this forth. And I believe, you know, for all our people, it is important to tap into the real essence of what the culture is. And also, mm -hmm. I didn't the day knowing of how to truly express, you know, your gift and, you know, your element or your talent, you know, within the culture, because at the end of the day, you know, me seeing this movie, we almost, you know, lost uh, Butchum. I saw help up expressed, you know, the way life is experienced in German, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Which is not the same way it is experienced in USA, which is not the same way it's uh, expressed here in Uganda, you know, like ever all, all over the world. If we find that true authenticity of hip hop is when we can really, you know, tap into what hip hop truly is, you know, and to our people, you know, which is to me the most important, you know, thing. And, and that's why I love so much what you've uh, uh, tapped on. I mean, how hip hop is continuously, you know, being used, you know, to influence youth in a positive way. And also in, 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 in that authentic, you know, way of expression. And, you know, uh, uh, please, you know, and just, uh, you know, a quick, you know, few uh, seconds. I would love you to just share, you know, a quick few uh, words, you know, or, or statement, you know, I mean, to us for uh, incredible, you, you know, I mean, just uh, from you, from you. Yeah. About hip hop. Yeah. About, okay. Yeah, I would say um, there was. Uh, in the 90s, there was a, a, a band which was one of my favorite bands ever, and they're called Poor Righteous Teachers. And they had this song, and also I think an album was called Each One Teach One. And I think this brings uh, everything together because when we, when we said hip hop comes from those who were in struggle, those who like to suppress, and each one teach one means, hey, if we found something, that brings all of us joy and uplifts our community, then we have to make sure that we pass that knowledge to the next generation. Word. And, and like you said, um, showing a movie like uh, We Almost Lost Bochum, mm. that like movies like this should be in every library, in every school library. This yeah. is, I, I think this is a very good point because you know, even these days, like if you just go to YouTube and uh, there are on, on Netflix and these streaming services. There are very, very good documentaries about hip hop, and I think these documentaries really should be shown in schools and in libraries, yeah. because they, because in this fast times of internet, social media, everything is so fast. You know, it's fast to forget things, and it can be fast that that some people get a uh, get a wrong picture of hip hop that they think, ah, oh, hip hop is like being a star and I just be cool and then I right. become a star. But I think it is the duty of everyone uh, to teach those youth that are interested in the hip hop culture, to teach them the roots of the hip hop, to really show them where did it come from? Why did it become so popular? What kind of people were behind it? Mm. Like, why, like, where did it come from? You know, right. it's so, sometimes for me, I think it's good here in Germany that there's German hip hop, but uh, like a, a negative point about it is sometimes when people, when I play, played hip hop here in bars or in clubs, people come say, hey, let's play some hip hop. And I say, I'm playing hip hop, but then they mean German hip hop and they're not happy if you don't play German hip hop. And then I think they didn't understand it. You know, it's, it's more than just playing 
German hip hop that you can sing along to. Hip hop is like, I was always open for music that I didn't know. Tunes, dope tunes that I've never heard before. Like another DJ plays and I was, oh my God. And I come from the vinyl days where you didn't have Shazam. So to find out what the guy was playing uh, was not easy. And, um, and um, yeah, that we have to, we, to come back to this, it's the, the whole aspect of hip hop, the whole culture should be really always brought forward. Not that somebody has a mic, is rapping, and then there's a DJ cutting. No. Where does it come from? So Because I think if this is done right, then it will, uh, the, the consciousness will stay within hip hop. If this will lose, then it will just, at one point, it will just be one of those commercial styles, you know, right. in music. Right. But hip hop is so much more. Like yeah. there are so many yeah. different styles in music that come every year. Then you have this and this and this. But hip hop is above everything, you know. It's like it's a thing, like reggae music that won't go away if we treat, uh, teach the right culture, but if we really pass on the, the right knowledge for the for the people, and then everyone can decide which direction in hip hop he wants to go, he or she. But first, like like uh, to understand. The thing, like to understand the culture, you have to know the aspects of the roots and the whole picture. And so I think each one teach one. We should all work on, on, on passing the knowledge to, to youth, inspire them, and uh, yeah, and all work on, on a better future. Yeah, I mean, give thanks, give thanks. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, we appreciate. I mean, thank you so much, your brother. It's been an honor and a blessing. You know, to combine with you today, you know, I mean, and just, you know, go throughout uh, history and also bring us to the now, you know, uh, this conversation or this interview has been inspired by, you know, the movie, we almost uh, lost uh, Puchem. So special thanks to uh, Goth Zentrum Kampala for allowing us actually uh, be here yeah. today to connect and just tap into uh, this very important conversation as far as hip hop is concerned and again a special thanks goes to you know the whole our uh, crew you know of we lost uh butcher uh peace brother catch you next time man yeah thank you man yeah peace peace and love